Oh, what is going on, everybody? Hello! It is Pixel Partners here, and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney 2. When we left off, we are knee-deep in court right now, trying yeah. to tear apart this whole thing going on between Courtney and Drebber and all this chaos, and now we need to show because, you know, there's no... I love how you call her her first name, but you don't call Enoch Enoch. It's just Drebber is so fun to say. Dre I know Enoch sounds cool, but Drebber. Drebber, Drebber. It's fun to say. Oh, all uh, right. Anyway. Say. Anyways, so we're here trying to present some evidence because we don't have ADD at its we don't have a motive right now against him because of the whole money thing. And so before we're recording, I was trying to look through things because we only have one life here, and I was trying to figure out what exactly we have that could prove some kind of motive from it. And I saw something that I can't believe that we didn't see. What? Let me know when you see it. When my blind eyes see something? Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and show it for you. Oh. Yeah. I guess the artist was a lighter man again. The artist slash reporter. Yeah. Yeah, I could never have read that from here. Are you kidding no, me? To be fair, I never noticed that before until I was just like looking around and I was That's like, That's why the oh. contract is a thing because we can see his signature. Yes, we can. So I think we're going to present the contract because that has like, we can use that. And it's like, what do you mean this is the motive? And it's like, well, look at this. Boom. So. Yep. This is the contract that you and Mr. Madigan shared. Yes, exactly. That contract is precisely the evidence that proves I had no motive to kill the victim. <laughs> no, actually, it's the opposite. No, I'm afraid you're incorrect. This contract <laughs> is precisely the evidence that proves you did have a motive to kill the victim. It, it is. Damn. Stop spouting rubbish. Try actually reading that thing carefully. It says right there that in order to understand the motive you had for killing men again, this contract is not enough. We need to look at it alongside another piece of evidence. Ah, the one I just found today. Yeah. Another piece of evidence, you say? Very well, then let me ask you again, defense. Yes. What piece of evidence in conjunction with the contract shows the witness's murderous intent? It's this one, where I was just looking at it and I literally just verbally went, Oh my god! <laughs> Cause yeah, I, I heard you from the <laughs> other room. You went, Oh. <laughs> my. God. <laughs> I feel so bad because we've looked at this like 50,000 times talking about the Mad Sheep Rampage and the yeah. Great Stink. Meanwhile, literally right above the Great Stink is Lighter e Manigan's Manigan, signature yeah. right there that we never noticed because that's such an <sighs> us move. Yeah. The answer lies within this newspaper article. The newspaper's 10 years old possible villains could it have. Balderdash and Piffle. There's no merit to be had in that third-rate newspaper article. I'm sorry, but when you say Balderdash... <clears throat> and Piffle? What is Piffle? No, no, when you say Balderdash and, like, rubbish and stuff, you sound even more like Simon Blackwell. With the... Oh, God. Because <laughs> that, that, that tone is very similar to your Simon Blackwell voice. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, both this contract and this newspaper article have something in common. He's a Japanese-British man. They He's do. not a samurai, though. No. <laughs> No, I'm saying Simon is a Japanese-British <laughs> man. True. And that commonality tells us everything. It clearly shows that you're reasoning for killing a lighter man again. Or a British Japanese. I'm doing the best if you hit, if we hit. <laughs> Let me try this again. Holy Ooh. shit. Words. Are you redo. okay? Long day at work. <laughs> I believe it would be best to hear out the defense's assertion through the to the end. So close. Perhaps you better point out to us, attorney. What is the common point between this newspaper article and the contract? Oh, by the way, it was my birthday now today, oh, by yeah, the way. I, so I forgot about that. Happy birthday. I forgot. I for ha happy birthday, you me. Forgot I it's forgot. Your it's birthday. my birthday. <laughs> yeah, go me. Um, kind of like how you, you forgot how old you were turning. <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. That's the thing that happens on a regular You're like, basis. You're like, how old am I going to be? <laughs> Any <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Baby, Anyways, baby. there's baby. what we need. The signature that I just found earlier today. The common point between these two pieces of evidence is the signature. The signature. Notice the signatures on the newspaper article and the contract. They are both written by the same person. What? Uh. 
The illustration on this article was drawn 10 years ago. It was drawn right in front of Mr. Drebber's eyes by the reporter who wrote up the article. If you look closely, you can see that reporter's signature. <laughs> on the other hand, we have this contract that was written up only one year ago. Here you can see the signature of the victim, Mr. Manigan. But this is really this is the same signature. And that can only mean one thing. The reporter who wrote this article and drew the illustration is none other than the victim of this very case, Elider Manigan. Uh, I like that. <laughs> yeah. That was clever. I like it. You're like a mime. I love yeah. it. But you're forgetting one vital point. How does this prove that the witness had any sort of motive for killing Menigan? Think back for a moment. You may remember what Mr. Jarber testified about this... Uh, what must be, what he testified about this earlier. <laughs> Grave robbing, you say? Our oh, dig-up courses only had just been buried and sell them. W what a despicable business! Yes, well, I got my punishment handed to me in the end. The Daily Circus learned of my name and wrote all sorts of things about me. I caused all sorts of trouble. I had to leave the university. That was the only newspaper that actually published my name. Yeah. And it ruined his career. It ruined his life. That was when, thanks to the article, I gave up my dream of being a, becoming a scientist. Yep. Vengeance. At the time, you were an aspiring scientist studying at the University of London. However... With the publication of this single article, your life was turned completely upside down. Does that mean that the lighter man again used to be a journalist? I believe he was, my lord. Minigan one day found himself a key figure in the criminal world. It's rumored that he was due to the various shady connections he formed as a reporter. You lost your dreams, your university career, and everything. In the end, you were reduced to hug, to huddling <laughs> in the darkest underbelly of the scientific the community. <laughs> <laughs> and as I stated earlier, the one who wrote that article was Mr. Menigan. Cease. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's gonna happen. What's Calculating. he Calculating. <laughs> if he could refrain from telling tales about other people's lives. Witness? It's true that I dropped out of university because of that article. But that wasn't the only reason. It's just what pushed me over the edge. Okay. Really? The majority of research students lack the money to be able to carry out their research. Even after you've painstakingly formed a theory, you become a target of so for society's evils. Before long, your theory has been stolen and some other party has patented it. What a cutthroat profession! Managing to succeed and make something of yourself as a scientist is something only a handful of prodigies with Lady Luck on their side can do. I'm not so deluded as to believe I could stand as an equal to a genius. That's why. I saw that it was a good opportunity to leave the university. Mr. Drever, you truly believe what you just said? Uh, of course I do. I'm the only one who knows my own talent or lack thereof better than anybody. Even so, your words contain a contradiction. <laughs> what did you say? And I have the evidence to prove it. How can you say that? You don't even know me. But fine, show me. Let's see your evidence. It just goes right back to me. I left the universe because I know town a scientist. What about that? You have a fucking trophy. Yeah. In your name. A science, a science trophy. science award to the, trophy. To the greatest honor of young scientists you could hope to achieve. You the best star. Yeah. <laughs> Does this look familiar to you? We found it in your workshop. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it, isn't that the Royal Science Award? Well, what's a Royal Science Award? Oh, judge. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest honor a young scientist could hope to achieve. It says so right here in the evidence report. <laughs> it's the most prestigious award given to those with extraordinary talents and a bright future. What? You had a very promising future ahead of you as a scientist. Yeah. And you had the talent to back it up. You were awarded for it. But that future and that talent were all stolen away from you in the blink of an eye. All because of this one newspaper article. 
I don't know when exactly you found out who Mr. Menigan was. However, as soon as you realized he was the same reporter from 10 years ago, you found revenge to be your only option. I... I... Did I do it? <laughs> oh boy. I don't have any high hopes, but... Nope, there we go. Oh, 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 who said hold it? I don't know. Is it gonna be Courtney? Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh boy. It looks as though the time has come. What? I admit it. I confess to everything. Um. But what did she just say? And hold on a minute. That Japanese boy is exactly right. This man coerced me into cooperating with his murderous plan. If I didn't help, he said he would let everyone know of my secret from ten years ago. What? Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's oh, just like, boy. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> uh oh, the floodgates have opened now. Dr. Sith? Do you understand the gravity of what you're saying? It's all true. That day... When I arrived on the scene and saw that cage lodged into the crystal tower, I was so shocked I could hardly breathe. For ten long years, I'd kept those memories buried deep away inside of my heart. But there he was. It was that heinous murderer glaring at me. And then, something else caught my eye. It's a note. The wax figure was carrying a message. Oh, jeez. It's a car. Good that Lord. was the message. <laughs> Dr. Sith, assist me in my plan. Bye, Ozone. I knew you well. <laughs> Christ. Signed, someone who knows the truth of ten years ago. So that wax figure was like part of the message. Yes, it was. Damn, that's profound. That's why you grabbed that one. <laughs> yeah. The entire plan was written out in that letter in meticulous detail. I had no choice but to follow its instructions. I made the necessary changes to the crime scene in Ford's autopsy report. I had no choice. It was all to protect the British Empire's legal system. Well. I'm truly sorry. Now that you've done that, there's nothing that's really stopping our man here from just going off about what he saw now, so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see where this goes from here. Should be interesting. Uh-huh. What's gonna happen next? He's terrified. <laughs> but, but why? There's little point in hiding it now, as I see it. I assisted in your little murder plan, only out of desperation to keep our long-held secret. But all those lies crafted to hide the truth of the execution have already come to light. It'd be futile for me to try and struggle now. This is the end. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what say you, Weenog Driver? Your accomplice is admitted to everything. What will you do? I'll admit everything. <laughs> Do it. You really have to ask. So you mean... I admit to nothing and I never will. What? Well then. <laughs> that device blew right up along with the rest of the stage, or did you forget that? So long as I don't confess, you've got nothing. But wow! Oh. Uh, well, that's not good. No. There's got to be something. Order, order, order in the court. Regardless, I admit to everything. This man blackmailed me, so I assisted with his murder plan. Prosecutor Venzix, may I say something? What is it? For what it's worth, I owe you an apology as well. Forgive me. I'll leave the rest to you. <laughs> That's enough! Court shall now state its view on the matter. Huh? This trial is not the place to discuss the crimes of Enoch Deborah. The defendant of this trial is Benjamin Dobinbow. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Ben, forgot about you. <laughs> uh, so he is. How easy it is to forget. <laughs> uh, isn't he your best friend? Damn. 
In any case, as Dr. Zitt has already confessed to the accusations raised by the defense, do not feel that I'm able to declare the defendant guilty. Uh, wait, 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 does that mean? The court finds that the defendant is unrelated to the current case in question. Do you object, Lord Van Zeeks? No, as you wish, my lord. We did it, Naruhoto! Dr. Dovino is definitely going to be declared not guilty. Guilty! <laughs> in that case, I shall now hand down the verdict. Are there any objections? Nope. Nope. Uh, <laughs> think I did it? <laughs> <laughs> Can't help but feel like something's not right here. Again. Yeah. Was Dr. says something so quick to admit her involvement? Naruhoto? Is something the matter? As you said, if the verdict is handed down now, you're guaranteed a not guilty verdict for Dr. Dobinbo. But... Is that really the best course of action? We should really demand right now. Justice! Justice! Request further testimony. Justice! Yeah, calm down, Batman. Justice. I object to a verdict at this time. Oh. The defense demands one final testimony. What? Have you lost your marbles, boy? <laughs> but, but you are about to win an acquittal. I wonder what on earth is going on in that head of yours, Japanese boy. Am I objecting to a verdict at a time like this? Perhaps you ought to reconsider your profession. No, no, no. Hear us out. Mm. Naruto, what are you doing? There still remains part of the truth that hasn't been brought to light. What? That's it. Yep, that's what he was talking about. Oh, but I got it. Something was warning you about? <laughs> if you catch sight of a hidden truth rearing its head during this trial, do not avert your gaze. Give chase. Give chase and hunt it down. Toodaloo. No matter what happens, you mustn't let it slip away. Keep pursuing it until the very end. Meanwhile, he's in the gallery. Do it! Hunt it down! That's my boy. There you go. <laughs> I trained you well. I trained you well. You didn't well. train me at all. Exactly. <laughs> Back then, Mr. Holmes already knew. He was more than aware that the trial was going to pan out like this. He's smarter than he looks. I stand in court for the sake of my clients. And of course, my main goal is to win an acquittal for him. Obviously. But there's more to this. So long as we stand in this courtroom, we have a duty to uncover the entire truth of this case right until the very end. He's like, ah, oh, truth, oh, okay. Good boy. <laughs> That's precisely what, good boy. The defense demands Dr. <laughs> Sitt's testimony. You want testimony from me? Just what about? I want you to testify about your cooperation with Enoch Drebber. Huh, what's the point? I already admitted to everything, didn't I? There's no truth left for you to uncover. This is all just a waste of time. Gah. The judge has already start stated that he has deemed the defendant unrelated to the crime. Demanding further testimony when your victory is within grasp is completely unnecessary. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeet. <laughs> Sherlock, ow! <laughs> How impudent my hand to slip so carelessly. If it had a mouth, it would plead forgiveness. <laughs> Excuse me? His hand slipped? <laughs> As that was, Lord Van Zeeks. On that note, witness, if the prosecution demanded testimony, you shouldn't have no complaints. Oh, he's like, what if <laughs> yeah. I want testimony? <laughs> exactly. What? <laughs> if there still remains part of the truth shrouded in darkness, then it is only right for the prosecution to do what it must do to drag it out into the light. <clears throat> Prosecutor Van Zeeks, you. This is highly unprecedented character development. Who knew? <laughs> However, I cannot ignore requests from the prosecution. Dr. Sears, the court requests one final testimony from you. Testify about your involvement as an accomplice in this case. Very well, my lord. 
Spicy. It's getting spicy up in here. God, he, this is not helping me not trying to be attracted <laughs> to this vampire man. Ah. Okay, you got a testimony here to do. Ah, blah, 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 blah. It all started with the message left on the wax figure at the scene. Just as the message said, the real body was underneath the stage. I was the one who tampered with the body in order to frame the defendant for the crime. I also tampered with the crime scene with the assistance of the FTF. The truth behind the execution ten years ago is a secret I would do anything to protect. There's the important part. Yep. There really was a trick to that stage. That's right. It was very well hidden, but I suppose you found out in the end anyway. I'll commend you for that, boy. Thanks. Uh, uh, thanks. <laughs> 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 but what about the autopsy report? The body was found underneath the stage. I simply changed that detail on the report. So that was nothing more than a bold-faced lie? I didn't get anybody besides the FTF involved. I would like to make it clear that Scotland Yard played no part. Mm. I suppose it is somewhat of a saving grace, if only a very small one. Mm. Seems that this testimony has made everything very clear. Do not believe a cross-examination to be necessary at this point. You shut your mouth! <laughs> it's no use. I still feel like there's something off. Yeah. Now look on Dr. Sith's face. Mm -hmm. The defense maintains all right and duty to cross-examine the witness. My, aren't we stubborn, Japanese boy? Hey, you're not allowed to do that. Look at <laughs> that man over there. <laughs> Only Van Zeke gets to be discriminatory. To exactly. Very well. In that case, <clears throat> I order the defense to cross-examine the witness. Yes, my lord. You. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. I'll start with the message left on wax figure of the scene. What exactly did it say? The message didn't say who it was from, right? Did you have any idea who was trying to threaten you at the time? There aren't that many people who know about the truth of ten years ago. However, I didn't know about this engineer. I couldn't possibly have guessed it was from him. So you assisted in the murder plot without knowing exactly who was behind it. <laughs> I had to protect the secrets of the professor no matter the cost. And yet the truth has come out. There's no going back now. You've likely lost a great deal of the odds trust for what you've done. <laughs> oh god, Ooh. that was a lag. Ooh. Oh jeez, we're good. I know that, you don't need to tell me. So there was a wax figure inside the cage, but then, oh, it was the body. It was a yeah. yeah. Oh gosh. So does that mean you knew the trick behind the whole performance? The wax figure was at the crystal tower and the victim was under the stage. It was obvious. And you switched the two, right? Which means... You made it seem as though the body was found by the tower in the wax figure? I wrapped it up and had it sent by carriage to the specified address. So you were given an address. From where Dribble received it, retrieved it, he then sent it on to Madame Rosakes. He received it from himself when he stole it. Yeah. And then you returned the cage to the stage. That's right, though it seems the wrong one found its way there. Even though I'm sure I made my orders perfectly clear. But we're more concerned with the victim's body, not the cage. She, she's like a female Van Zeeks. Yeah. <laughs> they went to the body in order to frame the defendant for the crime. Like the way she holds herself and the way she talks just reminds yeah. me of him. Tampered might you be referring to this? Yes, that's what the letter told me to do. Create evidence to make it look as though Dr. Dobinbow murdered Menigan. So you framed Dr. Dobinbow? Poor guy. I took Dobinbow's screwdriver that was on the stage and headed down alone to where the cage was. Hello? I believe this to be something I had to do alone by my own hand. Okay. She's putting a lot of emphasis on being alone. <laughs> Under the stage, there was a small cavity where the cage lay on its side. I knelt down and slowly opened the cage door. Just stabbed him in the heart. Yeah. And then I took the screwdriver. With all my strength, I stabbed it down. Goodness. Whew. 
And that was the cause of death you recorded in the autopsy report. She would know where to stab, too, right in the A heart. falsified cause of death. That's right. In that case, it was the real cause of death. Trauma due to a 30-foot fall. How awful! I can't wait for it to be that he was actually still alive and she just fucking yeah. gutted him <laughs> with the screwdriver. Gutted? Well, you know what? I'm just you mean I'm, stabbed in the heart. Hang on to me. I'm just being dramatic here. So, so what's the matter? Doctor says testimony. Something about it bothers me. Yeah, actually, same here. Doctor Sith. Feel free to address me without shouting, you know. Please add that statement just now to your testimony. My statement? And which statement would that be? You know, the, which statement is right? <laughs> oh, wait, which one is presented? Um, let's go with the true cause of death. Please add the statement about the 30 foot fall to your testimony. Fine, just stop shouting. The prosecution has no objections. In that case, witness, please add the statement to your testimony. Yes, my lord. Hmm. Okay. Well, I don't like that we only have from one. the stage. Yeah, so we have to get this right. But based on what just happened, don't you want to save first? I mean, you're not wrong on that one. Should <laughs> probably go ahead and put a save down here. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> don't mind me. I'm just dying. Okay. <laughs> huh. Jeez. Don't die on your birthday. <laughs> that, that'd be happy, messed happy up. birthday, happy death day. No. Okay. So. Where is the falsified, the, the potentially falsified, the autopsy report about Mr. Madigan? Okay. The victim died due to blood loss from a stab wound to the chest by a blade which penetrated the heart. The victim was found to have a broken neck due to a suspected fall from a great height. Hmm. Mm hmm And she's saying that the fall is what killed him. Yeah, but I think the thing that we have to pursue is the fact that it might not have been the fall that actually killed him. Let's press this, because it might tell us, it might want us to, so let's press it, see what happens here. He broke his neck. Is that right? That's right. That is the conclusion I came to as a coroner. It's hard to tell if his neck is broken from the crime scene photograph. Yeah, you're right about that. Of course it's hard to tell. That's why coroners like us exist. The issue is whether we can trust your judgment or not. Yeah. We are not here to entertain conjecture made without evidence. Continue your testimony. Very well. Hmm. Let's keep going through this. FTF. The old FTF shady as hell. <laughs> you had the help of the whole task force to fabricate the crime scene. The forensics task force is a collection of the finest minds in investigation. What they value most of all is loyalty. Think of them as a having a knight's honor. What kind of knight would turn against Justice Act as the pawn of a criminal? Then I'll put it like this. Priorities. Huh? Our biggest priority was to keep the matter of the Professor a secret, no matter what. They accomplished that goal to the very end, and I'm very proud of them for that. Uh. It's no use. We can't win by words alone. Uh, I thought lawyers are meant to be good at arguing. <laughs> I take it by your silence that you understand. In that case, allow me to continue. Fine. The truth behind the execution needs to go as legal as anything to protect. But you lost the truth, the trust of Scotland Yard in doing so. The truth. <laughs> Not only that, but it seems your beloved secret has made its way out anyway. Yeah. You're completely correct. And I accept responsibility for all of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was that another way for you to achieve your goal? I did all I could to the best of my ability. Although I want you to know that you have my respect. She says that, but she's still looking at me like I'm the scum of the earth. Yeah. 
Don't worry, I'm sure she meant it. I... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I have to work with. Dr. Sith has already admitted to being an accomplice to the crime. What else could there possibly be? I'm not sure yet, but I know there's something. I can feel it. You can feel it? You know what? I think I can too. She's being far more cooperative than Mr. Jever right now. Yeah, you're right. I feel like there's still something lurking beneath the surface. And I'm about to break. Okay. <laughs> so. Let's see what the other statement is that, that we can change it to. That didn't quite work. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm gonna... Oh, it... Oh, that doesn't change anymore. Okay, so this is just gonna... This, that's the whole thing. It's like, you go stabby stab, and then they go deady dead. <laughs> and then it goes loady loady. It goes loady? Okay. There we are. All right. Let's go ahead and change the statement. See what the other one says, even though I think... Yeah. I tempered the crime scene. I think for certain maybe I'll be able to reject her testimony. Very well. So what is this one? The victim's corpse lay right there. in front of me, I stabbed the screwdriver into its chest. It's not really, I think I'm restricted on that, but... See, we're the one who stabbed the body with the screwdriver. Yes, it was far easier than conducting an autopsy. All I had to do was stab it in. Uh, is that right? <laughs> the victim was already dead, having broken his neck. I simply did what was demanded of me in the letter. You don't want to lose your cool. You can picture it now, you bringing down the screwdriver without even flinching. Flinching would have done nothing more than impair my aim. Dang. Please testify about how you tamper with the crime scene. Very well. I do think it's going to be the other one. So I'll go ahead and switch it back quick, which means I got to go over here. And then I got to go through all this. I'm just going to talk about the murder again. Just, yes, yeah, stabby, stabby. <laughs> stabby, stabby, daddy, daddy. Already daddy, so didn't daddy twice. But we're going to figure <laughs> out that he wasn't so daddy after all, was he? What? Yep. I said that. I don't know what I said, Whoa, but I game. said it. It freaked out for a second. All right. Change the statement. We're going to go on about the... Okay, so... Oof. I imagine the cause of death was the impact of falling from the stage. Now what about the cage? I'm going to say maybe... Can we open the door to the cage to get in or anything? Because I want to look at like... Well, no, because like the bottom of the cage. That's what well, had impact. Yeah. But that so... doesn't necessarily mean that wouldn't break his neck. I guess, yeah. <sighs> we need, like, invaluable proof. That's not going to do anything. Um, Let's take a look at everything. Crime scene diagram. All right, ain't much to go from there. The green cloth, the crossbow. There's the crime scene photo. But like I said, there's not enough detail in there to prove anything. There's the autopsy report. There's the screwdriver. There's that, and then just the... There was something that didn't have a mark on it for a second there, I thought. No. Okay, never mind. That's just a screwdriver. All right. The hot air balloon photo. That's not going to do anything for no. us. The photo of Drever. Nope, that's not going to do anything for us. That's the cage, like I said, that we were looking at. I guess I wish I could look at more of it, but the bottom's the only thing that matters to us. Okay. And then there's the glass shard that came from the tower. That's yeah, a glass shard. Yep. <laughs> There's the camera. That's from Forever Ago, the Science Award. The wax figurehead. Open it, bitch. Please. <laughs> okay. Professor Autopsy Report. <sighs> the accident photograph. I don't think there's anything here that's going to say anything otherwise, but... Contract... Is it maybe... All I can think of is the cage. Same. Damaging the underside. Huh. Well, I mean, there's one. This is this is going to be the drama for next time. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it going to be the cage, or are we about to lose our case? <laughs> oh God! Or do we want to try and? I mean, if we're wrong, we're just going to load up from the save right where we True. were, and then we'll get the correct one. So this is the risk we take. We risk it for the biscuit. Oh, that's a bad mamma jamma. Oh, boy. I'm pretty sure there's a contradiction in that statement somewhere. 
you're pretty sure. Uh oh. Cease! I believe we have heard enough. You're fired. M my lord, P please wait. The defense doesn't finish this reasoning. Walter well, decided that prolonging this trial is unnecessary. The two will now render its final verdict. It would be our honor, my lord, to hand down our most unshakable verdict. Usually. But, but he said he was not guilty. He should not, he should not be guilty. Kind of broke the logic of the game by losing here, but yeah. Oh well, <laughs> we get to see ourselves lose. Yay! Ow! That hurts. hurts now, as a fan, hurt under the defendant Benjamin Dumbledore. Get it? Just that's because. what I get for risking it. <laughs> oh man! What well, answers are here for a swift judgment? That says court is adjourned. Bap! Ouch! Well. I guess it's time to try that again next time. So restart the whole trial. Oh, God, Let's go ahead no. and just continue from the save. It'll be like nothing See, you've, ever you've happened. See, you doomed us with this because you kept throwing <laughs> evidence out willy-nilly without saving and didn't reload. It's fine. We're going to be fine. You're really good at screwing us over. Yes, I am. Yes, I am.